Hello, everybody. I don't have any fancy PowerPoint stuff, so I'm just going to have to talk and hopefully entertain you. Um, we are living in changing times, a hyper individualism, hyperbolic rhetoric, and a surre surrealistic sense of unreality is taking hold. Physicists are showing that a nonlinear dimension is. It's happening. It's like a perennial flower that returns to bloom in the multiverse. We are being inundated by a deluge of information, facts, and figures of fake news. The paradox of choice and option parallelisms have filled our minds. The influence of the senses, says Ralph Wilder Emerson has in most men overpowered the mind to the degree that the walls of space and technology to time has come to our look solid, real and insurmountable. And to speak with levity of these limits in the world is a sign of insanity. Technology has the power to shape our mind, our life, our morality. Refusal to admit the simple truth is what Marshall McLuhan describes as a narcissistic hypnosis, a syndrome whereby man remains as unaware of the psychic and social effects of, the, of the, his new technology as a fish of the water it swims in. The products that we are creating today will shape the lives of tomorrow. That is what we're doing today. We are beta testing technology with our lives. We are beta testing our safety, our privacy, and well-being. Our ethics and morality are all being beta tested in this new, dark, dystopian reality around us. The evidence of this dystopian reality can be seen. All phones today come with camera filters that make us look better. Have you ever looked at an old photo of yourself taken five or even 10 years ago? and compared it to a photo done today. With virtually any phone, you look better. You look better than you actually look. When you post that photo on Facebook, on Instagram, on Snapchat, you're helping to build this distorted, dystopian reality around us. Have you ever stopped and thought, what if somebody with anxiety or mental health issues sees a filtered photo that I have posted. Social media makes you more depressed when you're looking at other people's vacation snaps, pictures of that dystopian lives. No matter how much you care about the person in question, social media invites comparison, which in turn leads to anxiety. We may post congratulations in the comments, which the algorithm counts as a huge win. When we're thinking or feeling in the face of these, what are we thinking and feeling in this face of these filtered images? Is there a sudden ramping up of our envy, our self-loathing, our, our depression, our darkness? In our new beta tested reality, we keep hitting that like button letting the soma of social media help us destroy ourselves in the collision between humanity and technology, to carry us away on that perfect holiday of others. How kind, how good looking, how delightfully amusing they are. So what can, what can we do about it? What some say to do is just delete your social media, unplug. I do not think that that's a viable solution for most of us. So that's a big of a moral dilemma I'll get back to in a minute. First, I want to say, do we have a moral duty to change? Should we go on doing what we're doing right now? Why change? Do we have moral obligations to the future? People or people of the present? Why change? Can we really do anything that make any difference? Maybe the only thing we do is change our actions. 
on a personal level each day to try to change this dystopian dark reality to something that looks slightly better. Let us look at, oh, I'm gonna look at one of the classical ethical theories, Epicureanism, and see if it can give us a nudge in the right direction here. Epicurus, an atheist, was a dude that hanged out in Greece a couple thousand years ago. He wanted everyone to find a path to liberate themselves from desire. He thought everyone should be happy with less. A plainly cooked dish should be just as good as that lobster dish. According to Epicurus, pleasure should be the chief goal in life, but the pleasure from joy from conversation or talking to others, not the pleasure from material possessions. We are a greedy species. We have trouble saying what is enough. Can we be satisfied with less? Less consumerism, less materialism is better, is more moral. But how do we go about reaching that goal? Buddhists and many other religions encourages the removal of desire. Desire is one of the many sins. But when we see that Facebook post from our buddy in Jamaica parting it up, we want to be there. I want to do that. Desire. Desire. How do we go back to the basics? We have to realize that the most critical part of the day are the conversations that we have with, our, with others. Friends and family. When, when we sit down for a meal, it's not that food that we are eating, but who are we with? That is essential. Another part, central part of the equation is gratitude. We should move through life with a profound sense of appreciation for nature and life and move against the desire for things to change the, the dystopian future. Now, that was a nudge in the right direction, I hope. Amazon and Facebook are spending billions to, to develop a super hyper nudge system to nudge us to buy products. Why can't we design a new app here today with a super hyper nudge system to bring good to the world, to remove the desire, to eliminate the anxiety playing anxiety, to, to bring morality and wisdom back to our community? I would design this app with a hyper nudge system to help us to create a new moral compass, one bringing us to the light, from the light to the darkness around us. At the core of this app would be gratitude. The power of expressing gratitude is the core of cultivating happiness and well-being. If you learn gratitude, we learn humility. We learn to remove desire. If we incorporate a sense of gratitude and positiveness, possibilities into your day, you become a more nobler, stronger, moral person. I would put in this app four things. One, when you wake up in the morning, to remind it that I'm grateful to have friends, to have family in my life. I'm grateful for being alive. The second thing I would put in this app is gratitude breaks. During the, during the day, allowing me to stop for a moment and feel gratitude. The third thing, the app would re remind me to thank three people every day. That person at the checkout that helps me, that, that bus driver, that guy that held the door open. The fourth thing this app would do is remind, remind me to conduct a, a daily prayer to express thankfulness and appreciation. Yes, a prayer. Did you know that Pew Research Survey showed that a large number of those who call themselves atheists pray on a weekly basis? You can mean atheists and pray. A little prayer and our appreciation never killed anyone. Gratitude would be the core of my hyper nudge system to incorporate more moral, wiser, and put some light into our dystopian reality. I would also put into our hyper nudge system thoughts and actions that make a difference. We're all influencers. Every action, every thought influences others, other people in our community. 
and our social media streams. I looked up to a definition of an influencer. An influencer is a person who utilizes the social networks to share their opinions and experiences in a way that is natural and authentic. Thus, by having conversations with real people, we are influencers. We are sharing our lives, hopefully in a natural and authentic way to others on the planet. Back to our app. Some real actions that we can add to the app is to pay it forward. If somebody does something nice, you can do something nice to three people. If somebody opens the door for you, open the door to three people. Pay it forward. Our app can nudge us to do that. Another thing that research has shown that helps us to grow a strong moral compass is when we see something in social media that causes a, a, a emotional reaction, we must stop and reflect on it. If you zoom past a strong emotional experience, not feeling and reflecting on it, it hardens your mind and soul. It is these deep physiological reactions that define our humanity. If you see on Facebook a story about suicide or some other tragic death, take a moment to reflect on it. Don't just zoom to the next story, next video. Take a moment to look into yourself and how you honestly feel about that story. Then move on. We could throw in the app a delay for a moment of reflection. One of the effects of social media is encouraging people to form and cherish artificial bonds over genuine friendships. The term friend, as used in social media, lacks the intimacy identified with conventional friendships, where people actually know each other, want to talk with each other, have an intimate bond, and frequently interact face to face. I would make the, our app nudge us to have at least one face to face conversation with somebody each and every day. All of us will help to create an app that influences others through our moral actions, fosters instantly, help us to remove desire and want, and help us deal with mistakes and the good things that we can do on a daily basis. Help us form that moral compass to guide us through the dark, dystopian reality around us. Those are the easy things we can do to create this app. But this is a, a super hyper nudge app. And we will add some hard things to do, six hard things to do. One, we could try to share something deeply personal with others that, that we trust. But help us to foster emotional and physical intimacy. Grow us as human beings. Two, we could find a friend and help them achieve their goals and dreams through mentoring or just being there when they need encouragement. Put mentoring in the app. Three, if somebody you know is suffering or having a lousy time, be there for them. Be a true friend. Four, practice active listening. Really listen. Turn off the cell phone and really listen to somebody. Practice active listening skills by being mindful in the moment. Put active listening in the app. Five, we all have vulnerabilities. We all make mistakes. Share them with ones you trust. It's all part of being human. Six, just be you. Don't worry about what others think of you. Just relax and just be you. This is one of the hardest things for me personally. During this whole speech, I'm thinking, what are you all thinking of me? <laughs> you guys aren't saying anything. Um, <laughs> um, I, 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 have, I have severe anxiety issues. In, and of course, I'm like, Maybe you think that I'm some Trump imposter full of hyperbolic rhetoric. Maybe you're correct. We almost just get over this constant feeling of being judged and have the courage to be authentically true to ourselves. Those are the six hard things to hyper to have foster a true moral compass, to guide us through the dark dystopian reality around us. We did it. We completed it out. 
to tell the truth, we don't need an app to build more of it, to be moral. All the things that I mentioned, we could just do. Often, when I do a little speech, I ask somebody after what they thought, they often often cough off one or two points. After you walk away from this speech, try to remember the importance of gratitude. Being grateful every day. Wake up tomorrow, grateful that you're alive, grateful that the world has not ended. Be, be grateful for your mind, your heart, your friends, your courage, your strength, your mistakes, your disappointments, your laughter, your body, the sun, the rain, choices, the trees. Even grateful for the social media driven dystopian dark around us, rally around us. Only through gratitude can we truly become a entirely moral human again and have any hope to change the dark future ahead of us. Thank you all. <laughs>